Hi there guys, Ralph here with 4K Equipment. Today I'm going to be going over another iDig video. This one I'm going to be doing the install with a few minor tweaks to the first video. And I'll be cutting in and out of where those differences are. Uh, I'll go ahead and get started here and then uh, I'll get back to you here in a second. Alright, so one of the main differences uh, from the first video that you should change, and this is all in the user manual that we can provide as well, um, this AB offset, it's actually looking for where the cab rotates. The BC offset is still just that simple off the uh, pin for the dozer blade to the offset of the boom pin there, and you got to rotate your cab to be dead straight. But uh, that's the BC. That AB offset is actually different than what I have in the first video. So if I take you down here, whoa, instead of it being in the middle of the tracks, it's actually going to be an up angle right here. So that giant stainless steel cylinder that it rotates on, it wants the middle of that. Which, as you can see, is offset towards the back a little bit. So I'm gonna take that measurement from there to this boom pin as well. Alrighty, so after measuring it out, I got about a foot, 10 inches from that center of that stainless steel that the cab sits on. And then I got about four inches for that offset there. Then I'm gonna move on to finish up rotating around and doing the rest of the width. Another question I get often is, does the surface need to be flat that we are calibrating on? And the answer is no. As you can see on the little sensor measurement here on the right, that is actually compensating for the tilt of the cab. So we're on a slope at about one to two degrees. And right now it says zero, but as I rotate around, that would go up to one, two degrees, whatever slope that I'm on. So the sensor that's in the cab actually calibrates for that. So you don't have to be on perfectly flat. Um, it is suggested if you can, the flatter the better, but there is a sensor that compensates for it. Uh, another thing that I ran into uh, while doing the setup is people are always asking me um, the actual operation of the left to right of the actual boom. So you can articulate the boom here. Uh, whichever way you calibrate it is whichever position the, the boom arm is actually in. So what we did is we took a little hole punch and stabbed the top of the steel and the bottom of the steel there so that we can see. There you go. Get a better view of it. So that we can see what is in line for the IDIC system. So we can still go back side to side on here and we can articulate the boom and then all we have to do is line it back up with that punch and then it'll be accurate again another question i get asked a lot is for the uh, laser itself whether uh, where you place it you actually have to rotate it which is perfectly fine so that laser is self-leveling so I have it even further off to the left here for whenever I'm shooting that pin. Let me hop out and show you more closely. So as you come up here, you can see that I'm dead on. And you can rotate this side to side. It is self-leveling. So as I extend this boom out, I'm gonna have to move it from right to left to get it to catch. So yes, you can rotate this side to side. It's still the same height, which is all that the system is caring about and for calibration. All right, here's another big question I get asked all the time, and it's actually in the manual as well, if you read through it real quick. But you have two options here for calibrating the bucket. Now, depending on where the sensor is, is which one of these that you pick. The wizard mode is a lot more time intensive and it's kind of annoying. You have to place the edge of your bucket on a specific point and rotate around 10 different angles for the software to remember the sensor's rotation versus where the position of the bucket is. And then the manual is you just manually measure from the bucket pin down to the bucket teeth and then the width. Um, you basically have to do the wizard calibration if your stick sensor 
is on this dog bone. You have to do the wizard calibration. Now, if you had it on the linkage down here, even on the bucket, you could do the manual mode. Uh, the reasoning is, is as this bucket rotates around, this dog bone is rotating at a slower speed than this bucket. So it needs the wizard mode to be able to figure out where this bucket is at as this rotates. If the sensor was on here, it would rotate at the same speed so that you could use the manual method. So I'm gonna go through, finish with the wizard method, and then this system will be all set up. And there you have it. That is an update for the iDig installation and calibration video. Um, I think I went over the majority of the questions that I get. Um, we are installing an XD610 system here. The 611 installs the exact same way. It's just a larger sensor catch for that stick sensor. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to drop in the comments and uh, we'll get to it.